Okay, we welcome uh, Jer uh, Jacob Johnson from uh, Marble City Pharmacy and uh, Help Monday. And uh, where's your brother? He you going to show up or you fire him? You know, uh, so for, I guess for public purposes, we won't say fire. That's, okay. that's, okay. that's a tough okay. term. We'll Honestly, say yeah. I allowed him to, oh, yeah. uh, to go away for a little while. Yeah, yeah, Learn his lesson. Uh, He's in the corner. Hey, uh, let's talk about something that's very, very common to many, many people. And I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. It's back pain. And uh, a lot of people struggle with back pain, young and not so young. You know, it's it's one of the most common ailments that there is out there. You know, normally at this time of our of our segment, we've thrown out some long disease name to you that yeah. nobody's ever heard of, and so we start by saying, "What is that?" Well, we don't really have to do that today with back pain because pretty much everybody out there has, has dealt with it uh, to the point that eight out of ten adults in America is very well acquainted with back pain. Um, that's not necessarily chronic, but eight yeah. out of ten have suffered some form of back pain. Uh, three out of ten Americans have had a recent episode in the last you know, month or two. It's just, it's, it's, it's revolving, it's constant. Um, roughly one out of 10 Americans have persistent chronic, never gonna go away back pain. And it's the sixth most common reported cause six of going to the doctor, hey, here's what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. this is my conditions. Back pain is number six in America behind all the you know, blood pressure, all the things we talk about all the time. Back pain is number six. And it's, you know, well, what is it? it well, it's, it's pain in the back. It, it can be anything from mild in a couple of days to severe and years upon years or anywhere in between. It can be local just to the you know, lower back, right where it happens to hurt, or it can spread out and hurt the upper back, the arms, the shoulders, <laughs> run down both legs. It can, it can be major debilitating in that way. And it can be made worse just by the most simple yeah. daily activities. Bend and grab something, lift something, Getting stand up, walk. Yeah. <laughs> just anytime yeah. standing from a seat, it can affect every single motion, every single movement of the simplest things all day long. So it has a big range that back pain covers. Now, I've dealt with back pain a lot of years. I got hurt at Flavor Rich uh, years ago and had back surgery. And you're right, it could come on you. I mean, you're fine. And then bam, it can be so bad that it puts you in bed. You can't even move hardly. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that we have to educate on, because this is a big deal with back pain, it can get so severe that it puts you in bed. Mm -hmm. But there's numerous studies out there that show first day you need to be in bed, that's fine. Maybe even second day, <laughs> right. that's fine. But if you stay in bed mm -hmm. more than that second day, you're making yourself way yep. worse, even though you don't really feel like getting yep. up. So that's one thing we kind of have yeah. to educate on with yeah. back pain. Yeah. So uh, what are some more common causes of back pain? Uh, you know, and there's a lot of them. And there's the ones you can't do anything about that we don't really talk about. Like you say, workplace mm -hmm. injury, you know, car wreck. You know, yeah. a lot of people that have it, you know, things start like that that there's nothing we can really educate or prevent about. It just, mm -hmm. it is. But there are a lot of things that, that we kind of can do something about or treat about. There, There's muscle or ligament strain. You know, you strain that back picking up something. You know, your kid jumping on you. You know, that's what happens with younger people. Um, you know, heavy lifting, sudden awkward movements. Um, even just the constant strain from poor physical condition leads to ligament mm -hmm. and muscle strain in the back. And then one everybody's heard of, there's those ruptured or herniated discs. We talk about discs all the time. What is that? Well, discs are the little spongy, soft areas in between the bones of your spine that go down, those vertebrae that go yeah. down. In between each one of them, there's that kind of like a shoe cushion. You know, mm -hmm. there's those cushions there. Those are your discs. And when that little soft spot, you know, it pokes out from where it's supposed to be or ruptures out of it where it's supposed to be, that's a herniated or a ruptured disc. And what that does is that touches the nerves all around the spine. That's when it starts running down your legs, your feet, tingling, burning, I can't stand upright. That's a ruptured or a herniated disc. You hear that term all the time. Then things we have, arthritis. Everybody has arthritis, right, it seems like. Well, if arthritis, your joints, the ones it affects happen to be in the lower back or the upper back, you have chronic back pain. And then last, osteoporosis, weak bones. We don't take care of our bones that well. If we, if we don't maintain them, keep them up and take care of them, well, a lot of times the bones it affects would be your spine, your vertebrae and your back. And if those start to weigh on each other and crack and crumble, well, obviously, you have a major back pain issue. So those are some of the ones that we do address because they're things we can do something about rather than you know, this vehicular or workplace accidents. Is it, uh, in, in what y'all do, do you see more lower back or upper back? With most of what we see, it's lower back. Because, mm -hmm. um, again, that's where most of your weight is, mm -hmm. is carried and borne. You know, upper back you can get from workplace exercises and things like that, but you know, or car wreck, of course. But most of what we see, the arthritis, the osteoporosis, the disc, more often than not, it's lower. And that's the ones that affect yeah. your legs the most. So, also. some of the risk factors for developing back pain. 
Well, the good news about these, well, one, there's a lot of them. That's bad. There's six or seven of them that we'll go over. But the good news is there's only one of them you can't do anything about. You want to guess what that is? Go ahead. How old you are? <laughs> Age. Why do you, know, you look at me when you say that? Well, because you love it when we bring up age on here. You always give me that that, that eyeball. Right, age. Age is a big factor in, in back pain, right? So the older you are, it usually starts around 30 or 40. Rarely mm -hmm. do you see somebody in their 20s start developing yeah. back pain, unless there's a, a, a reason we haven't covered. But, you know, 30s and 40s, it starts, and every year after that, you become more likely to have to deal mm -hmm. with it. So age, sorry you can't do anything about that, at least not yet. We hadn't found that fountain of youth. Ponce de Leon's still down there looking, as far as I know. Um, but other things we can do something about that are the most common risk factors for back pain. Lack of exercise. Nobody likes to hear that. Nobody likes to go to the gym. And we talk about but, something like that nearly every week. But lack of exercise, just like everything else we talk mm -hmm. about, is a, is a common leading cause of back pain. Those weak, unused muscles particularly. Mm -hmm. you know, we ain't talking about bulking these big pythons up. You know, don't oh, yeah. laugh at me at home. Uh, we're talking about these core muscles right here, front and back. You, you know, think about these back muscles. Sure, you need to strengthen those mm -hmm. to prevent back pain. But... These front muscles, and I need to do a little bit about myself, these go, anything through your core supports your back. So we mm -hmm. need to work on those. Um, carrying around excess weight, we already mentioned that. People, you know, chronically in America carry around excess weight. That is just constant every minute of every day strain on your back. We can prevent back pain by working on that excess weight. Uh, diseases like arthritis, and even cancer, cancer tumors can be there and impressing the back. Those things, you know, preventing your chances of arthritis with good health, preventing your chances of cancer with otherwise good health. Those things, we can work on that. Improper lifting is a huge one, especially if people have these, you know, physical demanding jobs. They lift all day, every day, learning how to lift properly, which we'll talk about in a minute. You know, improper lifting is a huge risk factor for back pain. You didn't see this one coming. Psychological conditions. For whatever reason, study after study after study has proven that people who suffer from depression and anxiety, two things we've talked about quite a yeah. bit on this show, have a very much increased risk of back pain. With, wow. When you take out every other factor, it still, it still holds true. Depression and anxiety, those people suffer from more chronic back pain. I can't explain it to you today. Even if I understood it, probably wouldn't have time, but I'll be honest, I don't. Um, it's... It's a huge risk factor for back pain. And then last, one again that doesn't seem to make sense, smoking. Study after study after study. Really? Take out every other factor. People that smoke have a higher instance of back pain. Some proposed reasons are that one, smoking decreases blood flow to the spine, makes you more likely to have the osteoporosis that crumbles mm -hmm. those bones. And, and, and two, all the excess coughing over a lifetime that someone with smoking has causes a lot of disc herniation. You know, there's a problem with those discs we talked about. So uh, that seemed to make sense. Those last two psychological conditions in smoking are two major risk factors for having back pain. I have been waiting on this subject for a long time. Okay. Uh, I remember uh, I, I used to do a lot more sports events than I do now uh, due to age. You know, mm -hmm. But <laughs> years ago, we did a lot of Little League you know, stuff and and. I remember at Pinecrest Park, there was a some kind of tournament out there we were broadcasting. And I was doing the broadcasting from left field, beyond the left field fence. Yeah. And in between games, I had a, a chair, uh, like mm -hmm. a lawn chair, yeah. that I sat in and prop, put my feet up mm -hmm. on the fence. Right. And it was so comfortable. It felt so good. But the next morning, I could not walk. It it did something to my back, aggravated it somehow or another, and I ended up in Birmingham at a hospital there because of, it seemed like so simple, but yet, you know, our posture and stuff, that's very important. It is, which leads us into our next subject, and that's how to, you know, okay, I, I, you know, I can do a little bit about my risk factors, mm -hmm. I can define it for you, I can do all these things, but let's talk about preventing yeah. back pain. And, and you learned a very important lesson. There's, there's three things we can do, and there's a lot more on my list that we'll talk about, but three things that kind of go into a category together. And, you know, when you're young, you, you learn how to walk and crawl and everything else. Well, as adults, we need to learn to sit smart, stand smart, and lift smart. Those are three that I'm going to hit on for a few minutes here. Okay. And, and yours is sit smart, where mm -hmm. you were that day. It felt, it felt great. Yeah. You weren't bothered that no. day. It was the most comfortable position. Sitting smart, you don't think about this, but to sit smart, it's not necessarily the first time you do it going to feel like the most comfortable way to sit. But if you don't want to end up at, in traction yeah, the next day yeah. at the hospital, you know, you got to learn these things. Sitting in a chair 
that has good lower back support. That may even look different than a normal chair you're sitting in mm -hmm. right now because it kind of pokes out a little right. bit at this lower back and puts, puts weight and pressure onto your back. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. A chair with armrests, which you may or may not have had on that camp chair. They probably sagged if you did because mm -hmm. it's meant to be lounged in, yeah. right? But lower back support, armrests, and if you're in an office and have to sit all the time, if you have one of those kind of jobs, believe it or not, a chair with, with arms and that will swivel keeps a lot of this back bending from going on. But where you ran into trouble that day, other than not having that lower back support, is when you sit, and it's not with your feet up, it's a straight line from your hip, I know y'all can't see under this desk, from your hip out to your knee, straight line. Not wow. knee elevated above, not knee, not, uh, a stool puts your knees below your hips, mm -hmm. a really low chair puts your knees above your hips. Hips and knees, in a straight line. So the height of your chair, which varies for every person, because some of us, in case you haven't noticed, have a different height. Big, big factor, hips and knees level. That day, you know, you didn't have that lower back support right. and you had your, your knees lifted above the hip low because you're resting on the fence and it felt great. Yeah. Didn't feel like an injurious <laughs> position and the next day you were at the hospital. Yeah. So sitting smart, standing smart. If you got to stand for a long time, I stand all day every day. You got to stand all day every day. Good posture, don't slouch. And, and prop one foot up just on something real small every now and then just to take a little bit of weight off of it and switch feet every few minutes. Yeah, I do that at work now, too. Yeah, yeah. that's a big deal. You know, and you, that's one you do naturally and don't think what you're mm -hmm. doing. That one is really good for your back as opposed to the sitting comfortably and finding yeah. out it's bad for your back. And then last, lift smart. You know this, lift with your legs, not your back. How many times in your life have you heard that? Bend, use the leg muscles, the butt muscles, and, 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 you know, along with the lower back mm -hmm. muscles. When you lift something, put the weight as much as possible on your legs keeping the weight close to you, not out here because that's putting strain pulling down. And learning to do those three things is huge. But then also exercise and get those core exercises like we talked about. Build the muscle strength around it. acts. I saw this in something I was looking up. It acts like a corset around your, around your spine and all the bone structure there. And I, I read that and thought, nobody below a certain age is going to know what I'm talking about when I say it acts like a corset. But just for those of you out there that understand, good musculature in the front and back acts like a corset around your spine. And then maintain that healthy weight and quit smoking. All those things help us prevent all this trouble we've talked about. Now, let's get to after all this. Yep. And there are a lot of treatments out there available for oh, back tons, pain. What's good tons. and what's not? <laughs> you know, if, if you look up anything... Uh, like a really reputable source, let's like a CDC or a Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. or something like that, you know you're getting good information from, right? Cleveland Clinic's another one you get good information from. All of them basically have a section under back pain that'll say basically buyer beware, you know, because <laughs> there's so many, you know, snake oil salesmen out there mm -hmm. for I'm going to cure your back. So again, you have to find what works for you and what makes sense. Uh, you know, in the rarest of worst cases, most people, one of the first things that pops in their mind is, well, I don't want to have back surgery. Okay, back surgery is like, you know, one out of 20 people that already have back pain. Yes. So if, you know, if, if you know, half the people have back pain and only one out of 20 of those get surgery, surgery is not the most common answer, mm -hmm. and it doesn't need to be. It's definitely not the first answer. Uh, but sometimes, as you learn, it is completely inevitable. Yeah. It happens, but we want to avoid that if possible. Um, physical therapy is another good one that, that we can do. The, you know, your doctor can order you go to physical therapy, you write that prescription, your insurance will cover it. Um, and they can manipulate you, teach you the exercises to do that target your specific area of pain where your bones or nerves are causing you trouble. Physical therapy is a good one people kind of forget about. And there are things that you know, don't necessarily come through the pharmacy, uh, the steroid injections they do in the doctor right. or the physical therapist's office, that sort of thing. A lot of those help a lot. Uh, and all those things don't necessarily come through me. I don't see those every day, but they're out there, and I have a lot of people that get them. But things that do come through us, both prescription and over-the-counter mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory drugs are pretty much your first line of therapy. You injure your back this weekend in the yard or playing whatever or sitting funny at the ball field, you know, the first line of therapy is going to be anti-inflammatory drugs. Your over-the-counter, it's your Advil's, your Motrin, your Aleve's, prescription, same names, just right. higher strengths, yep. right? Got a lot of those. Uh, and that, that's, that's your first choice more often than not. Uh, some people can't take those because of side effects. So then we move into topical things. Those same drugs in a cream or a gel or a lidocaine in a patch that we can put on the area that hurts. Y'all do that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Make, sell tons of those. It mm -hmm. makes a huge difference for, for treating back pain. Some people say, well, I can't take as much anti-inflammatories as I need because I have this condition yeah. or this stomach condition or what. I can't take them. Well, okay, well, let's use the gels, the creams, the patches. Let's see if we can relieve something before you start talking about surgery. Mm -hmm. you know, let, let's see if we can help you out with that. 
um, muscle relaxers, if it's a muscle pain, we use a lot of those. You know, I, I'll see a prescription in the emergency room that's a steroid and a muscle relaxer and see somebody limping in, I go, mm, you did something dumb this weekend, yeah. right? Think, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, and last couple, eventually a lot of times we end up at narcotics. That's not where we want to end up because if it's long-term back pain, do you want a lifetime of having to take narcotics? Mm -hmm. Now, is that an absolute reality for people? Sure it is. But you want to avoid that if right. possible because it takes you down roads you don't want to go down a lot of times. Uh, and, and then the last thing, here we are with the weird stuff again, antidepressants. Antidepressants, huge impact on back pain. We've talked about why, for some reason, depression and anxiety lead to worsened back pain in people. People are willing to take those antidepressants the doctor will give them. They go, wait a minute, I went to a pain doctor for my back and he wrote me an antidepressant. <laughs> I don't want to take that and throw it away. I encourage you to consider it if they're trying to give you that. It yeah. makes a huge difference in back pain. Wow. Last minute or two, let's talk about we are have moved we down have moved. the street uh, a couple of doors down. Construction is ongoing. What's going on with that? Construction is ongoing. You know, I, I found that no matter how many signs you put up, people still struggle to find you. So let's try this again. We have a big sign on the window, big green arrow pointing down if you're looking at our building to the right. We're all the way down to the right. Follow all the way to the end of the sidewalk. Follow the yellow brick road. Or, or actually just drive your car down because it's a long walk and it's 100 degrees outside. But we're at the, the same side of the complex we were on, same complex, just other end of the sidewalk. Drive all the way down. We're in that corner there, more than happy to serve you, still providing our full services that we always did. So we're there, hopefully just for another three to four months max. And then we'll be right back where we were, but bigger, Are you finding more better, people, newer. Uh asking for delivery service uh, now than maybe prior to, or is it about the same? It's about the same. Okay. Again, we do still offer in-town, in-city limits delivery services. If you're having trouble finding us mm -hmm. or don't want to bother finding us, we still offer in-city limits delivery services. You know, we still offer the curbside for the people that can't come in or can't get out because we are in that corner there and don't have the drive-through yet. It's all still available. We haven't gone anywhere except a few doors down, but the process is still the same. So please, don't, don't forget about us. Well, uh, finally this morning, uh, you know, you mentioned the drive through That's mm -hmm. going to be a big plus for you. It'll be a huge plus. You know, I, I look at some of our most loyal long-term customers that, that are getting on up there in age, and they wouldn't leave us to save their right. lives, and they are just stumbling in there, you know, on canes and walkers and everything else. And I'm thinking, I, I can't wait to have a drive through for that man or that lady. You know, they're not going to leave us. They want to come see us, but they can barely get out of their car, and yet they're fighting coming in every time just because they want to see us. You know what? I'll come see you in the drive through when we get it. You know, so it, it, it's coming, and I think it'll be a huge help right. for a lot of people. Jacob Johnson from Marble City Pharmacy, our guest this morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for me, Monica Mann. At the top of the hour, we leave you with a weather forecast. No heat advisor today. That's good news with highs in the upper 80s. And I uh, hope you enjoy your cloud covered day today, whatever you may be doing. I'm Jim Adele. Hope to see you in the morning, bright and early at 530. Till then, God bless you. God bless America.